If you saw my recent video on how to set up your color styles in Figma, today I'm going to show you how to do exactly the same thing except for your text styles. Setting up these text styles has the same advantages as setting up the color styles and the fact that you can set them up once and use them and edit them globally throughout your designs in Figma. All right, so I'm going to utilize a design mockup from a recent project I created and this is already totally laid out for us. However, none of the text that's utilized is connected to any kind of text styles. As you can see here, um, there are no text styles. So what we need to do to really create more cohesion and consistency in our design here is set up those text styles exactly how we want them to be um, throughout the site. So just like our color palettes, I'm going to switch over to my assets page, right? So when I come up to my pages, I always create a working design page and an assets page. So on this assets page, I'm going to create a new frame. And in here is where I'm going to insert and create those textiles. And so what I'm going to do, since I already have a design set up, I already am familiar with, you know, what, how I want this to look and what the text styles should look like. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste some of these over to be able to outline the full text styles we're going to be creating. All right. So we'll take this title on the home page because we know this is going to be our H1. So we'll jump back over create a text box using the T key on your keyboard and paste that in. Now I'm going to change this to say heading one. All right. And then we'll just kind of tidy up the box there. Now the next one we need to do is a heading two. So as you can kind of see the theme here, we're going to set up these textiles in order of the hierarchy of how your HTML nomenclature and structure works, right? So we're going to work from heading one all the way down to heading five, and then we'll do a few paragraph variations as well. All right, so we'll jump back over to our design and this heading, how it works is going to be our H2 style. So if we go ahead and hit T, drag a box, paste it in, and we'll change this to say heading two. All right, now go back to our design, and this is going to be our H3 style. Again, drag a box and say heading three. And then for heading four, I don't think I have one on this particular design. Um, so we can go ahead and just duplicate heading three and we'll alter these styles here to make sure they match accordingly. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do a heading five. Uh, I don't actually, it's very rare that I ever touch anything below heading of four, um, but we'll go ahead and set up a heading five. And then the next option below that is going to be a paragraph style. So we'll go ahead and grab this one from our design, come back over, create a text box and place that in. And we'll say body paragraph. Oop, don't know how to spell. All right. And again, what we're typing out here by saying heading one, heading two, heading three, this so far is only for our personal use, right? For visually knowing like this is the style that we're going to use for these. Uh, once we actually create the global styles is when we'll create the names for these in how we apply and select them in our design. All right, um, next I think I have, let's see. We have a subhead, so as you he see here, I call them subheads or sometimes called eyebrow text. Um, and so we'll copy that one. 
Are you looking to improve your design consistency and design skills in general overall? Then I put together a five day email series course that's made just for you. Check out the link in my description to get started. Come to our assets page, paste that in, and we'll call it subtext heading. And let's see what else we got. Um, the last two that I also do down here, we have a really small paragraph. So if we paste this in, narrow down, left align it real quick. And then we say body paragraph small. And then what I also like to do is body paragraph large. So there's some instances where I want some text to be a little bit bigger than the body paragraph, but not quite a heading size. And so I have a large uh, text style I like to use as well. All right, so now what we're going to do, um, now that we have these in place and, and most of them kind of pulled in from our design, we need to make some tweaks on the styling to make sure that they're dialed in with uh, what, what we want them to be globally. So heading three, I actually want this to be a little bit bigger. So we're going to go 32 point. Heading four, I'd like at 26. So we'll go ahead and keep that. Heading five. Um, we're going to go down to about a 22, maybe even a 20. Yep, I think 20 works pretty good. And then we've got the body paragraph is already set up for us. Subtext heading is already good to go. And then we've got body paragraph small, which is good to go as well. We've got 11 point font. Um, that's all set up. And then now body paragraph large. This one I want to be probably about 20 pixels, eh, maybe. Yeah, I think 20 pixels will work all right. Um, okay, so we've got these all in place. So really this is kind of our style guide, right? Between the color palette we created from our last video and the tech styles here that we've just created now, pulled from our design. We were ready to really create those text styles and apply them to our design. All right, so I'm just going to select my frame and just size it down here according to our content. And we'll go ahead and get started. So first, select that heading one text that you have created. And in the right hand panel here next to the text option, hover over those four dots. And this is our styles panel. We're going to hit the plus for create a style. And now we need to give it a name. And so I like to either say heading one or H1. Um, as long as you understand what it is and what it's for, that's all that matters. Uh, whether or not you want to abbreviate it is up to you. So we'll go ahead and just say heading one. Then come to our next one, hit those four dots once again, the plus icon and say heading two. And then we'll carry these out for the remaining. So we'll say heading three. Do the same for heading four. And heading five. All right, and now we got our body paragraph. So we'll say create style and say body. Then our next one, we'll say subtext heading. Then we'll say body small. And last but not least, we'll do plus sign body large. All right, so we've got all of our textiles set up. And once you click out of those, you'll see on the right hand side under local styles, now we have all of our textiles in order and ready to go. And what you can do is actually drag and drop these. So if you created them out of order, 
um, you know, we could say we want body small above here, then body large, and subtext heading come before those. So you can put them in order. I think it's just kind of nice, clean look when you have them uh, in order of actual hierarchy as you would use them on your design. All right, so now let's go ahead and apply these newly created textiles to our design. So we come back to our mockup and we'll go ahead and first select our subtext heading. And now if we go to the text panel, select those four dots. Now you'll see all of those options that we created. So we're going to go ahead and select subtext heading. And now we'll do the same here for our H1 heading one on our page. Go ahead and select that. This is our H2, so we'll go ahead and select H2. These are all of our H3s, and if you select one, then hold Shift and select the others, and then let go of Shift, you can automatically update the textiles for all three of those at once. So we'll select H3, and of course we did alter those a little bit based on our design, so I'm going to drag these paragraph styles down a little bit just to give them a little bit of breathing room um, all right and then we'll select our three paragraphs here and put body and then we can do the same here so this we've got our subtext this one is our h2 here is our body and so on and so forth so we'll go ahead and again, hit our subtext, hit the H2, and then these are all our H3s. Make this text box a little bit bigger. All right, and a couple last sections. We've got one, two, three more H2s to go. H2, H2. We got subtext. And that looks like about it. We have now set up all of our textiles. And so now as we go on and create new pages and new design mockups, all we have to do is select those textiles. And if you needed to edit the heading and say, you know what, this is actually a little bit too big. Just select your H1, come in, and on the drop down where it has heading one, click the little toggle here with the edit style, and we can jump in and edit those properties. So we can bring this down to, let's say, 44 pixels. And same with the H3s. Um, you're going to see once I update this, if I select H3, edit it, we can click down and you can see as I'm going down, as I go up, every H3 on the page is going to be altered. All right, so that's it. Um, we really created that global foundation for all of our textiles, including from all our headings to H1 to H5, a couple different body styles and a subtext heading. Now, just as I mentioned, when we created those global color palette and styles, when you do this with your textiles, it makes the transition going from design to development really smooth and easy to understand. You have all of the font sizes, the line heights, and everything already dictated for you. So all you have to do is plug in the numbers and get going. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you soon.